Okay, so I just uh, turned on my Dell Mini here, and I'm going to wait for the um, for the option screen here. I'm going to press zero, which will give us our boot options. And I'm, and I'm sure you can't see the menu, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to USB storage and hit enter. You'll notice the flashing indicator on the USB drive, indicating that I'm booting from uh, the thumb drive. And watch what happens here. I don't know if you can see the Apple logo and the spinning symbol. What I've done is loaded uh, OS X Leopard 10.5.6 onto uh, the thumb drive, USB thumb drive. And so with the options of booting from a USB port that has allowed us on this Mini, all we have to do is interrupt the boot sequence, tell it to boot from the USB drive, and away we go. Now the read-write speeds on the USB drive are not super fast, so it will take a minute to load. Um, but once it's loaded, the operation is fairly swift. We're about a minute into the, uh, into the boot process here. Now, Windows XP does still exist on the internal SSD drive of the, of the laptop. So you actually have a situation where you can still run Windows applications as well as the Mac applications. So we'll just give this a minute here. Uh, we're about a minute and a little over a minute into the into the boot up sequence. It's obviously a fairly you know complex operating system, so it does take a while to load. Still getting the spinning indicator there under the. Now this is not a function of the processor speed of the of the mini. It is more a pro, uh, function of the read write speed of the USB drive. So coming up here on about 2 minutes into the into the boot process. And now you'll see things start to happen here pretty quickly. Everything on the system works. The wireless links. Just waiting here for the leopard uh, background to appear. Here again, the booting speed is not a function of the Atom processor and the Dell Mini. It is more a function of the read-write speed of the USB drive. Coming up on about three minutes into the process here. And here we go. Now what I would recommend is uh, getting either a SDHC card and placing that into the uh, Mini Mac, and there we have it. Okay. Still don't have our menu at the top quite yet loaded. Let's see here your function bar along the bottom with all our applications, your background of course, dashboard, Safari,
and you can see now the menu appearing. It does take a while to sync with the uh, with the network, but here again, this is a function of the USB drive speed and not of the Atom processor. Um, I've done a lot of testing loading it on different um, different memory types. The SDHC card uh, loads very quickly. Uh, there's a product called the Runcore SSD. Okay, here's your airport indicator here showing that I am connected to the internet. Uh, your drives along here, of course, and then your launch pad along the bottom. Fully functioning. There is about one gigabyte of space left on an 8 gig USB drive after you've loaded Leopard onto it. So there is a little space left, not a huge amount. You can see I'm connected. Let's just see if I can open up Safari here once and see. Give you an idea. And here you can see the browser loading now. I don't know what I have my page set to. I'm hoping it's just the Apple homepage which will come up, but I'm not positive of what it, what will come up here. You can see the indicator light on the USB port. And there you have it. So now that everything's loaded, things do happen fairly quickly. Um, it's just that initial load process because it is requiring so much read-write requirement of the memory does take a little bit. And so there you have it. And as I stated, XP still exists on the internal SSD of the Mini. So you have XP there and uh, your Apple OS X Leopard 10.5 on the USB drive. Okay. I'm just going to shut this down. Oops. Confirmation. Okay. Thank you.